Greetings everyone and welcome back to another Starship Review. Today we're taking a look at the Equinox Pilot Scout Ship, which is a science raider. And uh, it, I'll go ahead and say right up front that this is now the best ship, or at least the fleet version, the Fleet Nova, is the best pilot ship uh, in the fleet store. I did a video not that long ago where I laid out my top fleet ships and I picked one per specialization. I put the fleet version of the Shran on there because that was the best pilot ship I could find available for fleet ship modules. That has changed now. So even before we start the review, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that little amendment in there that the fleet Nova, the fleet version of this ship is the new best pilot ship you can get with fleet ship modules in my opinion which uh, kind of bodes well for the review of the Equinox, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and talk about the Equinox. It is a science ship. It has radar flanking. It has a 4-2 weapon layout with a secondary deflector because, of course, it is a science vessel. It has five science console slots, so that's pretty good. You're going to be able to put, uh, you know, if you want to do torps, you could put four torps up there. Uh, or whatever you want to do. You can have plenty of room for uh, your science consoles, although these days people are mostly using Universal, so it doesn't matter too much anyway. But yeah, it's a pretty good ship. And because it's a Raider, basically the science version of a Raider, it has all Universal seating except for the Commander seat, which is a Commander Science Pilot seat. So it has full pilot specialization and therefore pilot maneuvers. But the nice thing about that is if you're doing science anyway, you're going to make you are going to want the commander seat to be science. So all the other seats are up to you to rearrange however you want. And the only real downside to that is you're going to be able to maximize your ability spam for science related things in terms of uh, science seating and maybe a few abilities here and there from other other um, careers. There's a couple engineering things you can use. The, si the pilot seating doesn't offer too much there. I think there's one pilot ability, which counts as a, a control bridge officer ability. There's not too much there. So it's not as good as having uh, temps temp op seating, of course, but it's, it's still okay. Uh, the flexibility means that you can maximize what it's possible to do even without temp op seating. And uh, yeah, it's just a nice little ship, to be honest. Um, with science, there's a pretty... Uh, the 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 bottom for science ships is pretty high. As long as you have a secondary deflector and you can get your consoles set up and you have ample seating for bridge officer abilities, pretty much any science ship is going to do well. Uh, so this isn't going to be like, you know, a contender for best science ship or anything. It's going to be a pretty strong science ship. And uh, the fact that you can get a fleet version with fleet ship modules and that also has the pilot abilities on there, the pilot maneuvers, if you like that sort of thing, uh, is just a nice little touch. Uh, so yeah, my evaluation of the ship itself is pretty strong, given that it is, of course, a pilot ship. But uh, it's not just a ship. It comes with some extras as well, some accessories, as I like to say. And uh, I've avoided talking about this ship because of the trait. So let's just go ahead and get that out of the way up front. So the trait is synthetic good fortune. And it has a passive ability, which is rare for traits. It gives you 25 star uh, ship sector speed. So that's when you're, you know, flying around on the sector map, uh, which is nice. But, you know, whatever. You slot it if you're in sector space. If you want to do that, everyone transwarps everywhere these days anyway. But it's there. It's nice to have. But the real thing here, on activation, uh, if you, when you're activating a control bridge officer ability or a pilot bridge officer ability, you get five control expertise and 0.5 crit chance, so a half percent crit chance, for five minutes. And it stacks up to 40 times. Well, what does that mean? That means you can get up to 20% crit chance and 200 control expertise. That's pretty good. Now, do these stacks decay? No, it's basically one stack. So it's not going to say like, 13 on it or whatever for 13 stacks. Once you have it, any activation refreshes all of them. So as long as you are hitting a control ability or a, a pilot ability every five minutes, which is pretty generous, um, you're going to refresh all stacks. And what that means is that even if, as long as you have a little bit of patience, 
you can get it up just using one ability. You know, if you just had one control ability on your ship, it doesn't even have to be a specialization one like a pilot one, and you can just gradually build that up to the 40 stacks. Unfortunately, you kind of have to go into the stats window and, and look at what your crit chance and stuff is to see whether you're maxed out or not. Get it maxed out, and then what doesn't really really matter what the cooldown is on your ability that you're using to refresh it, because you only have to do it once per five minutes. Uh, so you take that you, and you go into combat, and now you have this insane 20% crit chance buff. Well, here's the thing. I think everyone probably assumed that it once you did map move, uh, that would go away. It doesn't explicitly say that. Other traits do. There are traits that explicitly say until map move, this does not, and it does persist through map move. What does that mean? That means you can sit in ESD or Quonos, and build up your, your 40 stacks, and then start your uh, queue up for your, your TFO or whatever you're doing. So you can, you're guaranteed to get all 40 stacks before you even begin, because it will carry with you into your queue. And also, here's the part that's really crazy, it persists even when you unslot it. Now, once you've unslotted it, it will no longer refresh itself, so you'll only have five minutes to, to make use of it, but five minutes is plenty of time. So what you can do is you can sit in ESD, sit in Kronos, build up your 40 stacks, unslot the trait, you will still have the five minute buff, then slot a different trait, and then go do your TFO. So you can still have six other traits and 20% crit chance and 200 control expertise. What is Cryptic's response to this? I've been waiting for them to say they're going to do anything about it. They are aware of it, presumably. They said it's on his whiteboard or something. Uh, well, Augmented Dictator brought it up, and Kale said, what are you asking me about that trait for when you haven't told me what the bug is? And my response to that is, I, and I'm going to put it on the screen, tweeted about it on the 4th, November 4th, and I tagged Bordicus and Kale, and they did not respond. And I laid out exactly what the issue was. I didn't know at that time so it was so early, I did it the day it came out, about the, your ability to remove it and still maintain the buff. Are they going to fix it? I have no idea. They don't really seem to care. Are they going to, if they do change it, what kind of change are they going to make? Are they going to make it so that it no longer persists through map move? Are they going to make it so that it persists through map move, but not when you remove the trait, it gets cleared off? I have no idea. So honestly, I cannot tell you what the state of this trade is going to be in the future. But I can tell you one thing, if it goes unchanged, even if they just make it so that you lose the buff when uh, you remove the trait, it's still an insanely strong trait. Even if you have to actually use a trait slot for it, the idea that you can get 20% crit chance before you go into combat and keep it for the full duration with a very tiny footprint of just needing one control bridge officer ability, hell, you can even put a bunch of control abilities into your build and do a loadout in order to build up the 40 stacks faster and then switch to a different loadout that only has the one on there for maintenance to keep it going every five minutes. It's totally bonkers. It makes other crit chance related traits look like a joke. It is obscene power creep and I think a lot of people who care about uh, DPS stuff, you'd think we would be all over it, right? It's a huge boost. But I think this kind of blatant power creep is not good for the game. In my opinion, they should make it so that it no longer persists through map move. That will make it a lot worse, of course. But at that point, it will be what I originally thought it was going to be, which is just a nice little boost if you happen to have pilot seating. Because if you have a few pilot abilities, you can actually get a pretty decent amount of stacks up, even if you have to do it during the, uh, the briefing. So uh, the map move thing, if they don't fix it, it's still going to be insanely strong. They definitely have to fix the unslotting thing, I would think. But who knows? They seem to be too busy trying to sell us on the elephant ship. So we'll have to see. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I've gone on long enough. Let's go ahead and talk about the console, Nucleogenic Igniter. You get uh, passives in Starship Shield Regeneration and Control Expertise. And it has a clicky, which is a point-blank AOE radiation dot healing aura from enemies, which is really weird. So to each foe within 10 kilometers, it does some radiation damage every second for 15 seconds. Uh, abilities like that can vary in terms of quality. If it has to have 15 seconds to do its damage to allies within 2 kilometers of the affected foe, you get hit points and shield regeneration. 
So uh, yeah, it's an interesting console. Uh, it performs okay. I don't think anyone's going to make room for it on their ship, though. This is not a Genesis Seed or a Plasma console or anything like that. It's sort of an okay console if you don't have anything else uh, but and you want the control expertise and stuff, and it's going to give you some radiation damage. Pretty middle-of-the-road console, I would say. Not really a must-have, but why does it have to be when you have such an insane trait? But uh, let's go ahead and get to the ratings in terms of the meta score. The fact that it's pilot and not temp ops really kind of brings it down, to be honest. So I'm only going to give it a three. Um, but a three for a science ship is still pretty good because just like all science ships are inherently pretty good unless they have like a lot of fixed engineering or tactical seating or something. So maybe it deserves a four, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a three. I know that seems kind of harsh. Uh, the, pilot, the fact that it doesn't have temp ops kind of brings it down for me. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely good, right? It's, it's a good ship, um, so it, it deserves a good score. Uh, and in terms of the ship score, I think it's just uh, really cool. Um, it looks great, and uh, people have been wanting it for a long time. And uh, the, the scout ship thing really fits the theme here. And... Um, I like it, so I'm going to go ahead and give it five stars for the ship score uh, because I, I think it's a pretty good ship, and I think it knows what it wants to be, and it executes it very well. In terms of the accessory score, this is hard. This is hard. So in the current state that it's in right now, I mean, I, I guess I'd have to give it six stars, to be honest. It'd be the best trait in the game ever. But assuming it gets changed down to losing the buff when you unslot the trait, still five stars. If they change it so that it, you lose the stacks on map move, then I think I would have to bring it down to four stars, maybe even three. So take all that with a grain of salt. Don't buy this just for the trait because there's a possibility it will get neutered. But if you do buy it, feel free to take advantage of the trait. They don't seem to be in any rush to do anything about it. I think the most likely thing is that they'll fix the unslotting problem, but not the map move thing. So I have a feeling this is going to be a five-star trait, but, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Okay, that's my review of the Equinox. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.